Hey everybody, this is Nate from WASD20, and I'm here today with Carl uh, from the channel D20 Plus One. Going to be doing some uh, interviews like this here and there. Did one with Juice a little while back, you can check that one out. And uh, Carl just happened to be in town, reached out and said, yeah, let's get together, man. And I said, can I interview for you for my channel? And uh, he agreed. So, Carl, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah? Um, I'm just here, so I won't be fined. Okay, <laughs> that, that's good. We'll, we'll, I'll take whatever I can get. Uh, okay. Um, so Carl, D20 plus one is your YouTube channel. Um, when did this all start? Uh, let's see, I think it started uh, around October when the channel was first put together. Uh, but it really started when I was on YouTube searching some things about RPG Maker, trying to find out how to do certain things. And I happened to stumble upon uh, a channel called Fistful of Dice, uh, which we all know and love now. And I started watching the videos, and I really liked it, started following it. Um, got to talk with Matt a little bit, got to play with a game in, of his in Brigade Con, and he kind of gave me the inspiration, the kick in the butt to, to get a video channel going. And that's like, and here, here we are. I mean, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. So, um, your channel is mainly focused on RPGs, is that right? Yeah, and um, it's kind of the idea that the plus one is a little bit ambiguous, like the plus, you know, it's D&D &D plus maybe it will do, so, uh, like we've had one where we talked about the, the prequel trilogies a little bit, uh, Star Wars, uh, and we got into some other things like that. So, it's not just RPG stuff, but it's definitely mainly RPG stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So now you said we. I've noticed you have some new faces showing up on the channel here and there. Who are these other guys? Yes, uh, because D20 Plus One was always meant to be kind of a collaborative effort. And I definitely want to start getting into doing more like this type of thing where it's me and someone else. Uh, me, uh, Mark Neal, and Chris Locke are all kind of the, the founding members of the idea of this channel. And even though I'm primarily in it, um, we, we like to collaborate sometimes, do some reviews, uh, maybe have other people do story ideas every once in a while, just to kind of have a little bit of variety, um, you know, get a little different voice on things. So it's, uh, everyone's invited to, if you'd like to be a part of the 20 plus one or be a a guest host on an episode or anything like that, uh, drop me a line, let me know. I'd absolutely love to have other people on there, maybe do some interviews, do some chats, just, you know, talk up, talk and see what we can come up with. Yeah. Well, consider this me dropping you a line, Carl. All right. I, I'm taking you up on that offer. I want to be no on some time. Problem. That'd be fun. Yeah, very cool. So um, tell me about how you got started in role-playing games. When did you first get exposed to this amazing hobby well I actually yeah I started with with tabletop gaming with a game with I always jokingly say I started with third edition Warhammer 40,000 third edition back in the early 90s uh, playing a little plastic you know the little pewter miniatures uh, playing war on a, on a large scale yeah. Plasma guns, chainswords, that kind of thing. It's it's silly, but I enjoyed it as a child, and I still do enjoy it. Yeah. The, the main problem being this this you know being a, a uh, essentially a twelve year old at the time, and not having any money, and <laughs> trying to you know beg, borrow, and steal to try and support an extremely expensive hobby. Yeah. Uh, shout out to all the board gamers out there. You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> especially. Uh, Warhammer, Magic the Gathering, things like that. Of course, I picked the two most expensive hobbies out there for the most part. <laughs> yeah. But uh, eventually, I started to learn about this crazy game called Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I had some. I had a friend that played it a lot, and he said that I would like it, and I was kind of skeptical. But then I realized that I had this idea in my head about the stereotype of how it was, and I was completely wrong about what the game's all about or when it's played, you know, properly, or so so we say, not to say there's a wrong way to play it, but when you've kind of got more of a storytelling mentality to it, it's definitely a lot more fun. So yeah. 
that was my introduction to it. Was probably in the. Uh, I started with board games, tabletop games, and I worked my way up slowly, you know, like a drug addict with the gateway drugs to <laughs> uh, to Dungeons and Dragons. But <clears throat> it is actually cheaper. Like you, you've. Is, yeah, I mean, am I wrong here? <laughs> I'm, I'm working my way down. I'm like the guy that starts with meth and and works his way down to marijuana. I guess there you go to continue the the uh, <laughs> terrible analogy. <laughs> so, how old were you when you first uh, started playing D and D? The D and D, I actually was. I wasn't. I didn't start D and D until I was in college. Uh, you know, some people start drinking and smoking and doing other things while they're in college. Well, me. I was just messing around with D and D, so you know, yeah, you know what crowd I rolled around with. But <laughs> I, I didn't really have a uh, a gaming group or anything until I started to find new friends in college, and my, you know, my friends changed and the surroundings changed, and we just, yeah, we started playing D and D. The games were very ADD; they were all over the place. At one point, uh, we had the Punisher fighting the Emperor from Star Wars. And the Emperor told him to let the hate flow through him, so he did. And then he rolled a 20 and blew his brains out with a sniper rifle bullet. <laughs> so, you know, shenanigans, but it was fun. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So, what is it that you like most about role-playing games? Uh, what do I like the most? I think it's now it's the actual role-playing. And a lot of people uh, kind of have... It takes a while to get into that. Yeah. Some people never do, but... I think that the whole thing with getting into a character, telling a story in this crazy world, a lot of times that is just homebrew, uh, kind of made up completely. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's just a lot of fun. You can kind of lose yourself in this self perpetuating group told story. Yeah. Are there any other. So you're, you're primarily into D&D. Fifth edition right now. Are there any other role playing games that you've been interested in trying? Uh, are there other systems that you have tried? Yes, I have tried a couple. I've played. Uh, I actually started with Fourth Edition, which I know a lot of people are not big fans of Fourth Edition. I I was for a while until Fifth Edition came out. So, I but I am familiar with it, uh, and it does have some merit. I don't think it's completely without merit. But I'm never going back. So yeah. there's that. I've also played a little bit of Numenera, which is fun. I want to try some more of that. I've used, I've done some Fate. Um, let me think. I've played a little bit of Star Wars uh, Fate and Destiny, I believe is what it's called. And a little bit of a game called Itris Bay, which I played with uh, Chepe Le Pepe, also known as Von Trodden, which is quite fun. Very story driven and all you the only thing that you have at your disposal is is these cards that kind of alter how the story goes and, and kind of dictates how you're going to role play the situation out which is really interesting yeah uh, but as far as games I would like to try um, I'd like to I'd like to do Savage Worlds I haven't done that yet I've got the book but I haven't played it yet hmm um, I want to do more Numenera and just about anything that if I can get into a game with somebody I try to I'm, I try to jump in especially if it's one I've never done before yeah. because I think getting that full experience is really nice because I, I tend to lean towards 5th edition but I want to try and break out of that and, and yeah. jump into some new things uh, shout out to Chepe again for her getting me into that into that idea of of the niche, you know, kind of jumping into <laughs> <laughs> the more obscure stuff. Yeah. As he as he says. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. So Carl, what are some of your non gaming hobbies, if you have any? If I have any. I know it's a it's uh D and D kind of does become all consuming a little bit. <laughs> I yeah. know there was a there was a point there where I was running a one shot every week and I had to kind of step back from that a little bit and yeah. And reorder my priorities a little bit. Uh, I do. I I'm on Steam a lot when I'm uh, when I'm not uh, working or or working uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I like to mess around with RPG Maker a little bit. 
Um, I've actually got something that I'm working on now that I'm hoping to kind of collaborate with some people on, maybe get some of some of the better writers or, or you know, uh, creative minds involved in it. So for people who don't know what RPG Maker is, describe it. It's not, it doesn't uh, have anything to do with tabletop RPGs, right? No, uh, although you could probably, uh, you know, you could use it to make dungeons because it's got a map, you can make maps with it okay. uh, using like a, a drag and drop grid system. Um, the easiest way to get people introduced into it is to basically uh, to to kind of YouTube some videos on RPG Maker games or RPG Maker just to Google RPG Maker. Uh, it's very intuitive game creation software. Uh, I happened to pick it up on the Humble Bundle when it was very very cheap, which is the best way to get it because it is a little bit expensive, but it lets you. Run a, make a game as if you know what you're doing programming wise. It kind of holds your hand and it simplifies it to the point where almost anyone can do it, mm. which is good because you know uh, some of those there's creative minds out there who just don't have the capacity to learn C or JavaScript or yeah. what have you, uh, which makes it a little bit easier <laughs> yeah. for, for us mere mortals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, what about, do you have any favorite, um, YouTube channels that are not RPG related? I will, uh, I'm of course a pretty big fan of Markiplier. Uh, he, he does Let's Plays and all kinds of random stuff. Yep. Of course, lots of people know about him. <laughs> He's the, the pink mustache guy. Uh, let's see, I like the Angry Video Game Nerd. Um... Uh, let me see. Red Letter Media, they did the Star Wars Episode 1 review, okay. which is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, actually, they did all of them, but that's the one that sticks out to me the most. They also do Half in the Bag and Wheel of the Worst, which is great. Those are the two big ones for me. I uh, can't really think of any others off the top of my head, except for maybe uh, Boogie2988, whose Francis videos are pretty hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the RPG-related YouTube channels. So <laughs> you just yeah. gotta look at my all of the people that I subscribe to. About ninety percent of them are are RPG-related in one way or another. Yep. yep, there's a lot of good stuff out there for sure. Oh yeah. Um, so I know you like to play video games, computer games. You've uh, I assume you've played video games since you were a kid. Yeah, I started with I got a CD or a, not a CD-ROM. I got a PC computer on my sixth birthday, which I know, whoa, we got a badass over here. But remember kids, remember those youngins with your iPhones and your and your crazy flash memory drives and your iPods. You know, there was a time when computers were really expensive and that particular computer, uh, which could probably run on a McDonald's toy now, uh, was about $2,000 at the time used. Uh, yep. It ran DOS and it ran Windows 3.1. 3.1. This sounds like this sounds exactly like my first computer. It was a 486, 66 megahertz. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Windows 3.1 DOS. Yep. Two thousand dollars. That's how it was. Got the big floppy drive and the little floppy drive. Oh, see, we only had the little one. This was this must have been earlier. Yeah. yeah. You beat yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it was right uh, a couple years later, that was right when those newfangled CD-ROMs were coming out. Okay, see, my first computer had the CD-ROM, so, yeah, mine was a little later. You beat me. And we, uh, <laughs> I remember, uh, I think what happened was I fell off of a horse, and I know this seems random, but there's a, there's a tie-in. I fell off of a horse, and I didn't want to get back on the horse. And my mom said, if you get back on the horse, I'll get you a CD-ROM that you wanted. Wow. <laughs> it's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sounds like a good deal to me. So I got back on the horse, and yep, we got the CD-ROM drive. Of course, it was getting harder and harder to find things on floppy disks. But at that point, I think it was yeah. like early 90s. Yeah. So you kids in your... You know, nowadays, computers don't even have DVD drives in them because you get everything on Steam anyway, but 
You know, it wasn't always that way, children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And get off his lawn. Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so what do you, what would you say are some of your uh, favorite video games? You don't have to give me a favorite. I won't put you through that much pressure, but okay. you know, name us a few of your favorites. Like the all-time classics, or are we talking newer uh, stuff? Maybe a mix. Maybe yeah. uh, one from an all-time classic, one from more recent, or a couple from each. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Civilization. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, put in about 500 hours in Civilization Five because yeah. that game is very addicting, and yeah. it's very replayable. And it's actually a very fun tool for map making. Oddly enough, for making build world building, their random map generator. Uh, you can just generate a map, play a game, you know, on a harder difficulty, and kind of come up with. Oh, this is where the elves live. This is where you know, if you're a super nerd, like certain. <clears throat> but you know, it's it's uh it's a uh, it's just a altogether very addictive game. I yeah. played. Let's see what else I've been playing lately. A lot of Grand Theft Auto Five. Mm-hmm. Uh, on PC? No, no. Uh, I need to. I need to get it on PC. But right now I've got it on the PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, Diablo is another big one. Yeah. Uh, I used to play Destiny a lot. Yeah. But now I've gotten to the point where I don't know if I like it anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh, yeah, I heard it was a little disappointing. Didn't quite live up to the the hype for most people. But well, that's a, it's a very different game from what was initially pitched. Yeah. And there's a lot of, I have a feeling that they'll make a documentary about what went wrong, and it'll probably <laughs> be more interesting than the game itself. <laughs> um, but as far as the older school games, I really liked the, uh, I really liked the the PlayStation One era games, back in the day. Uh, the Crash Bandicoots. Uh, there was a game. I think it was called Psyops or Psyonix or it's it's kind of mm-hmm. obscure now, I'm yeah. sure, but it was a, a first-person shooter, kind of like, uh, kind of like Doom, graphic-wise. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun at the time. Also, uh, the a lot of the Star Wars games back in the day. Yeah. Uh, X-wing, Tie Fighter. Uh, yeah, so good. Let's see, Dark Forces, I think. Is that the uh, one where you're shooting stormtroopers? Yeah. yeah. It's like Doom only in Star yeah, it's Wars. Doom in space. So, so there's awesome. a little bit of a pattern there with Doom. Um, <laughs> I used to like so, uh, Sim City until they ruined it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's a downer. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's talk about happier things. See, I, I like classic Sim City. I love Sim City. The original SimCity, uh, SimCity 2000, those kind of games. Like even though they're outdated now, they're still the gameplay is just spot on. Yeah. And they never really recaptured that. They they were too worried about the graphics, and it's nice to go back to an earlier era where they couldn't rely on the graphics, so they had to make the gameplay better and the and the story better. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice that we're kind of coming full circle with with the indie games being more that way now yeah yeah it's cool good stuff carl um anything else you want to say any uh where, where can people find you on uh on the interwebs well on the interwebs uh well i'm on youtube at youtube uh, dot com slash d20 plus one the one is spelled out O-U-N, mm-hmm. or, no, wow, well, I can spell, O-N-E. <laughs> and the plus is spelled out, too? Yeah, yes, it is. Okay. Uh, the <laughs> only reason for that is there's a channel, apparently there's a channel already called D20 Plus One. Yeah. But it doesn't have any videos. And it is nothing but a favorites list, including Metallica songs and other things. So apparently someone else had the idea first, but then they didn't populate the page with anything, so... You know, that's the same thing with my channel. Oh, really? Someone had WASD20 before I did. Man. So I had to go with WASD20 dot, or no, WASD20 Nate. So, anyway. Okay. And I know... Back <sighs> Bust when, out the violins here. Back in the, <laughs> back in the day, 
uh, before I knew what your real last name was. I thought your last name was Nate Wadso. I thought oh, that was like yeah, a, yeah. you know like a Polish name or something. Wadzdo. Wadzdo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, okay, that's a cool last name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, back in the days of my old fake Facebook account, which I now closed. <laughs> it's back in the day. We're, 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 we're hearkening back to like two six months, months ago. ago. <laughs> no, two, two months ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But back yeah. when Facebook let us use aliases. Uh. Yeah, Facebook, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yep. All right, well, thanks for joining me here, Carl. It's been good. Uh, so, yeah, everyone, make sure you go check this guy out on uh, D20 Plus One. Show them some love there on YouTube and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, if you're not already subscribed to me, hit that little subscribe button down there. What are you waiting for? And oh, yeah. I'll see you all next time. I can see it. It's right down there. Yeah, it's pretty. It's really shiny. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>